All right. The sound of the boo boo zilla means it's time for the Get More Sports World Tour Soccer Podcast, exclusively on GetMoreSports.com. I am, of course, EJ Carr, back with you again this week. It's uh, been quite a trying week. Uh, the last few weeks, obviously, with European football getting started now. And to be honest with you, I, last week I had to skip the show because of the massive amount of writing that I've had to do for Diamond Sportsbook. And, uh, of course, that's just, uh, you know, comes with the territory. I mean, what do you do? There's uh, so much football going on right now. And with everybody opening their season, uh, the, the, the extent of the post that I've been putting up, let's just say this, and I will leave you to figure out the rest. The Italian City Oz campaign gets started this weekend. And between all the transactions and all the previews I did and predictions I gave out, the thread was over 8,700 words. I, yeah, I, okay. I mean, you can imagine how long that took. It's not like you can just sit down and break out, you know, an 8,700 word piece in a matter of a couple of minutes. And, uh, yeah, it took me almost two days, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, finding the information and copying and pasting all the table, people and players that are moving around and, it's, uh, you know, of course, you can't just take everyone's website. you got to do it in your own fashion. And, uh, yeah, and between that and uh, let, me, let me throw this out there. Between Italian City, uh, English Premier, Spanish La Liga, and German Bundesliga this weekend, all four of which I have previews up at Diamond Sportsbook right now, over 17,000 words. That's just for four leagues. Yeah, take this stuff pretty seriously. I mean, uh you know, anybody out there. Of course, Spanish La Liga starts this weekend as well, and Italy. So, uh, yeah, both of those threads, I think my Spanish post was about 4,000 words, which, you know, of course, a lot of it, you know, it is taken up by the uh, the amount of players who were moved. I, I gave the list of every player, every transaction that happened over the summer uh, summer window, and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite a lot of work. But, uh, you know, it's good to be back and uh, get more sports soccer podcast is here. We're going on the world tour and we have a lot to discuss. I mean, I, I certainly want to start in England this weekend. Boy, you know, who looked at those standings or the table, I should say, and uh, saw Manchester City, Liverpool, Manchester United. Okay, maybe those three teams, everyone thought that, uh, you know, that might you know, start the season pretty well. And, uh, you know, out of the four teams that are undefeated through the first two fixtures of the campaign, Leicester. <laughs> and it's amazing, you know. I got the Sunderland match. Okay, you know what? We'll, we'll give we can't really give anybody credit for beating Sunderland because uh, you know Sunderland's going to be in second tier next year. There's no doubt about it. And uh, how do you know that so early? Listen, Sunderland, their fans have already given up on them, which uh, we saw last year. Remember, I don't know if everybody remembers when they were playing everything, and uh, they went down three nothing in the first half hour of the match, and everybody just started getting up and walking out. Well. The Sunderland fans didn't even waste a minute last week. I mean, uh, Norwich came to town. And obviously, Norwich is fresh fresh up from, uh, you know, second tier Champions Division. And here they come into Sunderland, beat them down, and there go the fans again. I mean, when, when a second tier club comes up and beats you in your home opener. <laughs> Bye-bye, nice fans. So, yeah, Sunderland's in a ton of trouble already. I mean, it's going to be... Yeah, like I said, you know, you think, well, what's two fixtures? What's the big deal? Yeah, what's the big deal? Go watch a Sunderland, a Sunderland match and get back to me and tell me uh, exactly what you see. Because I'll tell you what I see is garbage. So uh, make sure you fade Sunderland as often and as, as easily as you want to. That, that team's a joke. So, uh, yeah, fans have given up, and uh, we're certainly going to make sure we take advantage of them for the rest of the campaign. I mean, I don't see anybody having any problem with Sunderland. Now Swansea comes to town. And Swansea City, I'll tell you what, to see uh, you know, plus 110 on them on the road playing against Sunderland, I don't, I don't care what that price is. I can't believe it's actually that, you know, worse than that. You you think that the juice would be minus 125 somewhere in there. <laughs> okay, let's just give away Swansea, and uh, we'll just move on from that. That's amazing, man. I, I, I'm telling you, to see plus 110 on the freeway line with Swansea to take uh, Sunderland. I, I don't care. Wow, how many fans are you going to believe this stadium? Uh, sorry, Sunderland fans, but uh, your team sucks, and uh, I have no problem telling you that. If you have a problem with that, you know what? Take it up with someone else because I really don't care. <laughs> your team sucks. That's it. 
Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, you know, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, Manchester United, Newcastle can be playing this week. Manchester United, we mentioned, is uh, one of the undefeated clubs so far. Two one nothing matches. Look great on the defensive end. I mean, it's, uh, a lot of people probably didn't expect uh, Manchester United to come out with two one nothing victories in uh, the early going. But uh, you know, Liverpool's done the same. Two one nothing matches. Now, nah, man. Tough to watch those kind of matches. I, everybody, everybody likes to watch it. match where there's some goal scoring, some stuff going on, even some chances created. I mean, that Liverpool, I know Liverpool, Liverpool saw that their opener was just, oh my God, that was so hard to watch. Of course, uh, Coutinho came through for them with a blast from um, just outside the box to give them the one nothing lead and uh, in the one nothing victory essentially in that first match and. Uh, yeah, Liverpool, boy, you know, it's, uh, I, I was just putting, like, boy, Ben Teke, it's a good thing he came out and scored a goal in that uh, one nothing victory last weekend as well. They needed that from him because they paid him a good chunk of money to come produce for them. And, uh, you know, I honestly thought it was going to be another Mario Balotelli situation where you just, you know, you bring over somebody, you're paying big bucks, and they come in and flop. I really, I, I wasn't sure how Ben Teke was going to work with them, and now Liverpool has to deal with Arsenal later in the week, uh, well, on Monday, later in the round, and uh, that's going to be interesting. That's obviously with Arsenal struggling out game a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I think that might might have been the shocker of everything was to see West Ham take down take down Arsenal the way they did, and uh, in Arsenal at uh, Emirates, of course, and uh, you know Crystal Palace. They obviously got by Crystal Palace last week with a two-one win. Which they obviously needed. I mean, that's you, know, you can't struggle. Uh, Arsenal just can't afford to struggle. Obviously, they make an investment with uh, Czech and some of those moves. I, I, I really thought that uh, Matija Perrin was going to be there from the Genoa goalkeeper, who's obviously back in line with, uh, you know, ready for uh, taking the Italian club to the next level with, when uh, Gigi Buffon decides to move on there. That would be interesting to see, but... Uh, that's on the international level, of course. But, uh, yeah, I was surprised I was surprised to see that um, Tia Perrin ended up staying in Genoa. But, you know, yep, Arsenal ended up settling for Petr Cech. And uh, is that good? Is that bad? You know, I, he's older. I, I've never believed in him. I, 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 Peter, I've never been a big fan of Peter Cech. Maybe it's the headgear that drives me nuts. I, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> he's really never been one of my favorites. But, uh, anyway, let's uh, keep going here. Uh yeah, Crystal, Crystal Palace and Aston Villa. It's going to be an interesting match as well. Crystal Palace obviously needs these two points after the defeat last week. And boy, Villa, Villa looked pretty good. It's, uh, it's probably going to be one of the more interesting matches of the weekend, I think. Uh, Aston Villa obviously didn't work out last weekend, but uh, Manchester United came into the house and beat them one up. And uh, you know, Villa looked okay. Uh, it was, uh, you know, they took out Bournemouth in their opener and on the road, no less. Now they're going to be back on the road again. Uh, boy, imagine Aston Villa going to end up being <laughs> two and zero on the road. Can that really happen? Uh, you know, Crystal Palace. I, I imagine Crystal Palace will be able to come out of there with the result with what they learned from the Arsenal match. They too, you know, all Crystal Palace really did was beat Norwich in their opening, uh, but they did on the road, which is obviously impressive. Uh, no matter who you're playing, uh, whether it's a second tier club coming up or not, you got to win those games and. Uh, you know, boy, I, I don't want to run out of time here. There's so much going on, and 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 with all these leagues, I'm already 10 minutes into this, and we haven't even touched any of the other leagues. So you know what? I'm going to break all this down for you in a different manner this week. I want to give out some plays all around the leagues, uh, from MLS all the way through Italy. Just run down right down the line for everybody because uh, it's a lot going on, and you know, I'd hate to leave everything out that I want to touch on. Uh, of course, Friday, the uh, German Bundesliga starts on Friday. And uh, Malaga is going to host Sevilla on Friday as well, which is tomorrow. <laughs> it's uh, you know, as I shoot this, it's pretty late on uh, on Wednesday, on Thursday night. I'm sorry, and uh, I'm a day late with with uh, how we normally try to work it out around here. But uh, yeah, I just like I said, that Italian post really really kicked my ass this week. And uh, for uh, the German Bundesliga match with uh, Berlin and Werder Bremen, I'm, I'm, I'm taking her her, uh, her to Berlin at home here. It's uh, plus one fifteen. Plus 110. I guess it depends on your book and what time you get to play in. But uh, I'm thinking Berlin they ended up uh, getting by Bremen. I, I just something tells me that uh, Berlin's going to find a way to pass through there, take three home points. And uh, the other match within tomorrow in Spain um, with Malaga and Sevilla. I, I don't trust Malaga one bit. I, I just don't. I, I, you know, if, if anybody recalls how they finished last season, so inconsistent. I, I, and I didn't see enough in the off season. But, you know, all the, the, the summer window moves that they made for anyone to come in there and really make that much of a difference. So 
I'm I'm playing Sevilla at uh, at uh, plus one forty on the road. Of course, when you're on the road, you're not gonna you know they're not gonna keep, make it uh, put too much juice on them. So the CCB at uh, plus one forty that, that's a price and a half. I, I think they should be able to go in there and be just fine. And even even if you have to settle for that uh, pick in the drawn up bet, I think that's about minus one thirty five as well, which isn't exactly too user friendly. But I, I still think Sevilla is gonna walk in there and take all three parts. So. Uh, that line is beautiful. Um, MLS, of course, is another Friday night match on Univision. And uh, Portland's taking on Houston. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to go against the green here a little bit. Um, with, 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 you know, Houston, we know, can't score on the road. They can't even shoot on the road. Uh, I mean, I, how many times have we seen Houston put up one shot, and maybe two shots on goal? And, 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 in fact, the last time Houston was in Portland, earlier in the year, they put up one shot on goal. But last I heard? You can't score if you don't shoot. Rocket science? Uh, I, I mean, come on. So, I know, even with the stellar play from Tyler, Tyler Derrick, and I don't know if anybody saw, he's up for the MLS uh, Save of the Week for last weekend, which was certainly impressive. I didn't end up voting for it. Um, there's a couple of nice saves in there. Anybody should go check that out. Uh, you, you can go vote on it yourself. I mean, go to MLS.com, register your... Uh, ID on the site, and you can vote for uh, you know, all this. I don't even know if you actually need to be a member of the site. I'm registered there. I just assumed that it was something that you needed to do. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that, that, that Tyler Derrick save on uh, who's that shot on? No, I actually can't remember. It was about 25 yards out, and uh, what a shot! What a save from Tyler Derrick hit the post, and it comes back down, hits the post again, and goes behind the net. Like, oh my goodness, man! <laughs> what a great save! But uh, yeah, boy, it, uh, a couple of great saves. It, uh, Bill Hamid ended up having a uh, man, three or four just outrageous saves, and his defense hung him out to dry. I must feel bad for DC United because Bill Hamid's obviously one of the best goalies on the planet. I mean, he's a phenomenal goalie, and imagine if he had a defense in front of him. And last, you know, last year that wasn't the case. DC United, it's one of the best defenses in the league last year. Uh, I recall right there, they were, they were, uh, I think they let up. Man, oh man, I can't recall if it was 37 goals they allowed. I'm not even going to try and remember the number. But uh, it wasn't too many, and uh, maybe it was 33, 37, somewhere in there. But uh, they were on their game defensively last year. That's just not the case this year. Uh, it's just not the same. Obviously, Hamid's missed a, uh, missed a bunch of time as well but, uh, with, the, with the double surgeries that he had to deal with, and he's back. But, uh, yeah, he's a great goaltender. But uh, I'm, I'm going to take this over in this Portland Houston match for some reason. You know, I, obviously, we know Portland uh, has taken two one nothing victories in a row, and, and that's great. Uh, good for them. I, I don't really care. I, I, they, 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 they hung them. They hang themselves on their defense. Uh, we're defensively so sound and terrific, and man, every every time they they come out with these comments about how great their defense is and what a difference their defense makes, they end up giving up four goals against a team that they probably shouldn't be doing it against. And here comes Houston, the team that shouldn't be able to do it. Right? No, Houston could never walk in Portland and find a way to put a couple of balls in the back of the net. Now, please, listen, I, I'm not buying anything that this Portland defense is selling. I haven't bought it all year. Of course, uh, in the last couple of matches, they ended up with one nothing wins, as I mentioned, but uh don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm taking that over. And it's plus 105 to boot, so you want to give me plus money on that? Thank you. Feel free to do that. And uh, that's what they did, so that's what I said. Yeah, take it. Um, Bundesliga, Boy, got a bunch of plays going in Bundesliga this weekend. I'm uh, taking that hand over. Uh, Leverkusen over two and a half. It's, uh, what, minus 115 or so, minus 120 maybe by the time you get to it, depending on your book as well. But it was 115 when I took it. And uh, I think Hanover and Leverkusen are going to combine to score five, six goals there. I, I don't think that two and a half is even going to be close. Uh, and I think Leverkusen is going to be doing most of the scoring as well. And they're only uh, minus 110 or so on the road, which is – you know, about right. Uh, I think Leverkusen can certainly walk in the handover and take that out, but at least a 2-1 win. I mean, a 2-1 Leverkusen win, and the over 2.5 is cast, and the uh, 1 by 2 three-way line on Leverkusen is cast, so I think Leverkusen is going to come out of there with a 2-1 victory, and I'm going to play that accordingly, put both plays on the board. Um, if you didn't catch our opener, uh, German Bundesliga post over at uh, Diamond Sportsbook, the first, first match of the weekend was Bayern Munich uh, taking on Hamburg, and of course we gave out the handicap. 
And that was close, huh? Five nothing. Oh my God! What, what did you think Hamburg, Hamburg was going to do something different? Yeah, sure you did. And uh, Hoffenheim's probably not going to have any more success than Hamburg did last weekend. And I saw that Bayern Munich minus one and a half handicap line was minus one fifteen as well. Okay, <laughs> just good luck stopping that team and good luck scoring on them. I mean that that that's the problem when you have a loaded offense and your defense is as sound as theirs is. What do you do? I mean, what do you do? Good luck dealing with Bayern Munich. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, what are, they're going to tear through that league like they do all the time. Uh, I mean, I don't think anybody out there is going to come up with some kind of bold prediction about who might come out of the German Bundesliga with a title this year. Because I'll tell you who it is right now. Uh, with only one match played in the season, please. Barring injury. I mean, of course. In the last year, you know, we saw them suffer with some injuries in the second half of the campaign. And what good did that do anybody? They still won the league by how many points? You know, so uh, I'm taking that Bayern Munich minus one and a half at uh, minus 115, as I mentioned. And uh, Saturday, big slate. Uh, Leicester taking on Tottenham. And I, man, all of a sudden, the line setters don't think that Leicester can hang out with Tottenham. Uh, I, I, listen, uh, number one, <laughs> the first half over one is minus 110. Maybe minus 115 by now. I took it. I took it on... Wednesday morning, and it was minus 110 on the first half over one with Leicester and Tottenham. Listen, I have never met a Leicester over I haven't met that I didn't like it, and uh, I, just, I, I, love, I love playing their totals. You, you can just you can almost guarantee, I don't want to say guarantee, it's the wrong word, but, uh, you know, the, the, a Leicester over is going to happen. I'm, I'm taking that over two and a half as well at minus 115. I'm taking the first half over one and the, and the full time over two and a half. Who's going to stop who there? We're, we're, uh, seriously, who is going to stop who? If you, you, you don't see a 3-2 match there? <laughs> sure you know. Uh, I, I love it, man. Uh, you might as well even uh, think about taking that over three. Just move it right up to the three and get the plus 140 on that action. Now, that's value. I mean, you know, you're talking about getting paid and the return of investment. There's a return. Uh, plus 140 is pretty nice. So, uh Maybe you should think about that. Certainly a nice play. And uh, Stoke City is going to be headed to Norwich. And uh, I'm taking this over as well, but I'm, I'm taking the over two and two and a half. Uh, that, you know, I know some people, when you see that over two and two and a half, you think, well, I, man, maybe that other might creep in. And, and, and it possibly could, but I, I just don't see it. And, and the nice thing about that under uh, the over two and two and a half with the handicap line is if it, if it ends 1-1, one, one, you know what? You know, at least get, you get half your money back. I'm not. I, I'm not worried about. Uh, you know, get, at least you get something back out of it. I, I mean, if you put a hundred bucks on that, you know, you're not going to win anything. But at least you'll get fifty bucks back. Uh, I mean, you won't win any money. But uh, I, I love handicap lines, especially on totals, uh, and, and especially with the two and two and a halves. Yeah, I think Stoke City and Norwich. I mean, Norwich has played what three or two, three, one matches so far this year. They've come up from second tier and just, uh, man, they won a game 3-1. They lost a game 3-1. And now this over two and two and a half is, is even money. Uh, all right. Uh, sold. Uh, I, I'm, I'm all over that. Uh, like I mentioned, and I mentioned uh, Swansea. Um, Verona and A.S. Roma. Mm. Oh, I'll start the start city out campaign. Uh, I mean, listen, uh, let, let me just hit you with this. I have been following Serie A since the 1982-1983 season. I was a kid growing up in New York, of course, and uh, you know, I played soccer most of my life, as most people know me from uh, my time at the Marist High School, tearing up that entire Westchester County, and tearing all you people apart. Yeah, I know if you went to Pelham High School, you hated me. Uh, I mean, that, that's it. I scored eight goals against you in, in my in my senior season. Sorry. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, ever since then, I've been uh, just a big city out there. This is way before the Internet, way before all the newspapers are in America. You had, to cover the, you know, had them covered. And I don't even want to tell you what I had to go through to find out the scores. And uh, A.S. Roma actually won the title that year. And uh, I've been a fan of theirs ever since. I mean, it was just a matter of timing. Uh, it really was. And, of course, Francesco Totti, I, man, you know, pretty damn good. Of course, I, you know, I, I was I was on his case a, like a ton last year as well because he only played a half hour, quick forty minutes, forty five minutes, fifty minutes, fifty five minutes. He just, he just seemed to come out of every match, and he, even if even if it was a, a one one draw and you need his influence on the field, uh, Rudy would still take him out. And 
Rudy Garcia drove me nuts. Uh, he drove me nuts last year. So hopefully Francesco thought he's healthy, and uh, he looked good the other day. I mean, in that uh, that crazy, absolutely outrageous six to four game the other day. I, I don't know if anybody thought that. Pretty tough to catch those preseason matches, but my God, man, six to four. And uh, yeah, for, and when now, now Hellas Verona is good. Ars Roman's going to open the season at Hellas Verona. <laughs> Even money on the over two and a half, people. Yep. <laughs> I, I just, I'm not even gonna. I don't know, I'm gonna stop laughing for that one. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, and of course, Ars Roma on the road last year wasn't exactly a big goal scoring juggernaut. They didn't really do all that well on the road at all. Right? To be honest with you, it, uh, they only had about 23 goals, 24 goals, something in the 19 in the, um, 19 road matches they played, and it just they, you know they never really got on track on the road. But uh, when you play Hellas Verona, <laughs> all that can change pretty quick. And Verona brought in some pretty nice names too. Uh, he came in there with Luca Tony, and uh, there's a bunch of names over there. Verona who came over this year to try, help Luca Tony try and maybe go out with some kind of a bang. Obviously, Luca Tony's pretty damn good. In case you missed it, and uh, yeah, I'm taking that over. I think Davis Roma and uh, Hellas Verona are going to combine and have some fun on uh, Saturday afternoon to get the campaign started. And uh, but uh, yeah, Lazio is going to be taking on Bologna at home this weekend at uh, Stadio Olimpico. You know, nobody goes into that place and scores goals. At Bologna. Man, the Bologna looked terrible, and their Copa Diamax this week. I mean, really, I just I couldn't believe Pavia. Really, one nothing at home. You lose to Pavia with a red card to boot and all that. Get out of here. Uh, now you're gonna go to Lazio and try and score there. Yeah, you, if you can't score on Pavia, you're not scoring on Lazio. So I'm taking that under two and a half, unless Lazio completely destroys that club, which, yeah, you never know. But uh, I'm taking that under two and a half at the Stadio Olimpico on uh, Saturday afternoon. But the other the other match that's going to take place in City Out to get the campaign started there. And uh, I'm going to jump back over to England. Uh, what's Chelsea going to do to West Brom? You know, I, I really was shocked at Jose Mourinho's comments after the game with Manchester City the other day. I'm sure a whole bunch of people probably caught that match on NBC and then saw his uh, post-game comments. And when they came back to the studio, everybody was looking around like, what the hell did he just say? Did he actually just say we played better than them in the second half and the better team that played in the first half won the match? Uh, Jose, you got outscored 2 nothing in the second half, dude. Shut your mouth and stop trying to put a positive spin on shit because no one's paying attention and nobody cares. He's been doing this for years. Uh, you know, no, nobody's buying it, man. I'm certainly not buying it, but uh, – you know what? With West Brom, I think Chelsea's going to walk in there and destroy this club. And that minus one, you know what? If Chelsea just finds a way to at least win this game two to one somehow, uh, Chelsea's not going to lose to West Brom. If Chelsea loses to West Brom, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what positive spin do you think Jose Mourinho is going to put on that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here, that, that'll start the whole uh, fiasco with the press, which he always finds a way to do at least – six to ten times during a campaign where he just opens his mouth and and he shouldn't have. He's infamous for doing that. And uh yeah, that's Chelsea minus one. You know what, if I have to push that action, uh, I got no problem. Uh, no problem. And uh that Manchester City staying in England for a minute, uh with Everton you know, I know Timmy's back. It's probably gonna change things, but that much did that help them last year. Uh Tim Howard got hung out of the dry all year last year. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm you know I'm sure Everyone's glad he's back, and, and it was weird to see him in the booth last week, and now he's back on the field. But, uh, you know, I mean, where, I, where, you're, you're call, what are you doing calling the games if you're actually getting ready to get back on the field? Uh, why aren't you with your team? That, that was strange. I mean, why weren't you with your team? If you're that close to getting back on the pitch? Why, why, why aren't you traveling with your team? Uh, I, very strange. But, uh, yeah, Manchester City, in case you missed it, my God. Team has it together, man. Vincent Company's obviously scored both a uh, goal in both matches, and man, it's Sergio. Uh, I, I just, you know what? And some guys go by one name all over the place, and I'm just gonna call him Sergio. Whew. My God, he what? He, he could do. He could have scored five, at that. Man, it, 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 if he didn't stand on his head, uh, man, I think Sergio would have scored at least five goals. I mean, he was throwing he was throwing bullets all over the place. Man, he finally found back the net there. Uh, give him, you know, I think it was two nothing when he scored. And uh, man, uh, what 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 a what a performance by him, man! Good luck stopping that man. Obviously, Torre and all that. I mean, 
yeah, Manchester City looks like they're on top of their game right now. I'm taking that over three. Uh, yeah, I mean, let it be 2-1. You know what? I'm, I'll live right through that. If it's, it's still plus 115, then I have no problem pushing that action, and I have no problem putting that three on the board. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to jump back to Bundesliga. Yeah, like I said, I'm jumping all around here because there's just so much to cover. Um, Ingolstadt, uh, t- uh, impressed? Uh, I mean, uh, you know what? I, I know we all saw what Dortmund did, but uh, Ingolstadt plus one is, is plus 135. I don't see Dortmund walking in there and beating them up. I, I just, you know, we I obviously saw what Dortmund did before nothing. It was pretty impressive, obviously. But uh, especially over Manchin Gladbach, that's not exactly an easy team to just actually humiliate like that. But, uh, you know, what? It's, uh, it's a different week. It's a different scene. It's a different stadium. Ingolstadt's first home game in Bundesliga. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be big, man. Uh, that, those, those fans are going to be absolutely Ballistic! I can't even imagine. I love that. How much fun would it be to be at that match? The first top flight man. You know, there's certain places where you wish you could be uh, at, at certain times at the point in the season. I'd love to be at the Ingolstadt uh, home opener. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, yeah, the plus one. Yeah, I, I just don't see Dorman beat, beating them up. The C plus one at plus one thirty five. Okay, good enough. Uh, you know what, Dorman be, Dorman beats them three to two or. Two to one, whatever it is. I, I, again, I had no problem pushing that action, especially a plus one third five. Right, thanks a lot. And uh, I expect my Mo- uh, and back to rebound nicely against Mainz because they better. I, I mean, and their handicap line at minus one is also like plus one thirty or something like that. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, what, what are they going to do? In case you missed their preseason, uh, they did fine. It was weird to see them just completely fall apart against Dortmund. And uh, they have mines in town. Yeah, Barnes and Gladbach is going to beat them up. I, I, I honestly just think they're going to take out all that frustration of the Dortmund match and celebrate a nice big home win in front of their fans this weekend. And, uh, yeah, man, here's Jude, Jude Ventus and uh, Udinese. And, uh, you know, I, uh, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned about Juventus. I really am, man. Uh, obviously, we saw Paul Bob, Paul Pogba putting on the number 10 jersey because Tevez left, and, man, yeah, he didn't waste a minute putting that 10 jersey on. And it's uh, weird to see Paul Pogba wearing number 10, not number 6. And, uh, obviously, we saw Juventus take the Super Cup a couple of days ago against Lazio in the rematch of the Copa Italia, and they looked pretty good. Um, but still, man, like I mentioned, no Carlos Tevez. No Arturo Vidal. Uh, obviously, we know Andrea Berlo's in New York now. And, oh, man. Uh, Marquezio is supposed to be out. Colini looks like he's going to be out this weekend as well. So, where is all that? I, you know, Paul Pogba is not going to carry this club. Yeah, is he good enough to do it? Well, yeah, he can be. I mean, his head's a mess, but, uh, you know, he can certainly handle taking that team somewhere. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the Udinese plus one and a half and two line. Is minus one thirteen. I mean, man, if Juventus beats Udinese by two goals, you know what? I'll, I'll still get half my money back. I, I have no problem with that. Uh, yeah, I, one and a half and two on that handicap line, uh, I'll take that. Udinese, I just don't think that Udinese is going to get uh, completely smashed by this Juventus club, even if the match is in Turin. I just don't see it. Uh, it's, it's a risk, maybe you know you can consider it a risky play for to, to some extent, but how risky is it? Uh, you know, I know we we all know Udinese is a pretty tough road team. They they just struggle when they go on the road. The past couple of years, of mixed results to say the least. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens there. But uh, I certainly want to touch on some Spain stuff because uh, you know Barcelona going to Atletico Bilbao, and uh, but did you see what Bilbao Bilbao already took this team out? Wipe them down. And, uh, and in the 1 1 match, you say, well, you know, maybe they didn't have a full lineup with them. Uh, took off the bio. Uh, yeah, they did. I see Messi. I see Neymar. I see. Uh, yeah. Who was not there? Uh, okay, Suarez wasn't there. Uh, big deal. You know what? But, but with the confidence that Bilbao has in that plus one, at plus 125, no less. Yeah, you know, everybody and their grandmother is going to be all over Barcelona this weekend. They, of course they are. They're Barcelona. They're the best team in the world. Yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah, I'm taking the uh, athletic ball by all plus one. I'm telling you that right now. Especially at plus 125. Right? Thanks a lot. Um, now, Gijon and uh, Real Madrid. Welcome 
to top flight, you know. I mean, how are they going to deal with Real Madrid on opening uh, opening weekend? <laughs> At over three is only minus one ten. Um, okay, really? So, what, what Gion's going to stop Madrid from doing what? <laughs> really? We know how Madrid starts campaigns, man. Uh, we saw last year right? they, they had seventy five goals by like the third game last year. <laughs> so uh, I'm not about to uh, be convinced that someone's going to come up to the top flight and completely shut down Real Madrid, whether they're home or not. Uh, that over three is I'm all over that. Uh, love it. Um, of course, AC Milan, we saw Inzaghi get fired in the offseason, which we all knew was coming. Uh, again, if you, you, know, you read, if you read any of my uh, threads last year in City A over at Diamond, which I covered all year last year, I, I, I was calling for it way earlier than it came. I didn't think he'd make it through the whole campaign last year, uh, much less have a job coming back, and uh, he doesn't. And it's a good thing for Milan because now they can actually maybe put a team on the field that can actually play football. They're, they're terrible last year. Uh, it was disgusting to watch that in uh, Fiorentina. Uh, and they see Milan going to lock, uh, lock up on on Sunday afternoon. And, uh, man, I, I, that over two and two and a half. So it's about minus 120 or minus 125, somewhere in there. You know, I'm not a big fan of juice. Probably. We all know that. But uh, I, I have no problem laying that over two and two and a half. I have to settle for a one-one draw. Go ahead and do that. But uh, in the frozen on Torino, what uh, what's frozen on going to do with Torino? I think Torino's going to walk in there and be just fine. Uh, players over there who know how to do what they're doing. It's probably going to be a low-scoring match. I think. I think Torino's going to find a way to come out of there with a result. And at plus one thirty, I'll certainly take my chance on them. I love that line. That's the three-way line, one by two to come out with three points. And uh, yeah, I think Torino's going to walk on the road and take out uh, frozen on their home opener at uh, first year in City A. Amazing, right? First year, it took you that long to get up here. <laughs> and uh, well, look, you know, again, it, it, it happened. I ran out of time. I have about another ten plays I would love to have thrown out there for everybody, but uh, you know, I'm out of time. Let me, uh, let me get everybody out of here. It's, uh, hope, hope you know, hopefully we'll catch you here next week, and we'll try to organize the time a little bit better. I, I don't want to just completely give out the handicapping plays all the time, but. Uh, yeah, I love giving out the place. Uh, it's uh, how I got my name, Rainmaker. And, uh, God, I don't want to let anybody go without uh, actually remembering that. Uh, you and now, 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 Rainmaker. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, uh, let's get out of here. It's, uh, you know, have a good weekend, everybody. We wish you the best, some of the best that you might be making yourself. and. Hopefully you can use some of our advice. And if you're uh, looking for any of my previews over at Diamond Sportsbook this weekend in any of the leagues, of course, I do all four major leagues in Europe. I'll be covering Champions League when the group stage starts. And I've done every MLS game last year and this year. Going strong, doing pretty damn well. And, uh, you know, like I said, I love helping people make some money. Hopefully giving out some good advice here. I imagine anybody who's been listening to the last few shows has uh, done pretty well. did pretty well with Europa. And, uh, you, know, it, it's, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll catch you next time here on the Get More Sports World Tour Soccer Podcast as we leave you with the sound of the Vuvuzela. Mm-hmm.